The following is a presentation of TFNN. Now, TFNN opens the door to the future. Larry Pesavento, systems analyst, is your tour guide into the market futures. Want to see into the future? Well, climb aboard Larry's time machine and come with us. Larry takes your phone calls now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. This is the Futures Hour. Here's your host, Larry Pesavento. Okay, good afternoon, folks. This is the Commodity Hour for TFNN. And I wanted to start the show today uh, with the uh, lunar cycles that we talked about on Monday and Wednesday. And what I did was I put in a chart from uh, uh, last June, and it shows all the new moons and full moons since that time. And if you get a chance to take a look at it, you'll see that uh, of the ones that did occur, uh, most of them were uh, almost exact. There were uh, two that I circled. One was in August where it was two days off. In other words, we had the new moon on the 13th, and today's the 15th. This would be the last day. Uh, the same thing occurred on the full moon of uh, September, uh, excuse me, late late uh, August, early September. That also was off by three days. So it only has a two-day orb. Today's the last day. Uh, we just made the 61% retracement on the cash S&P going back uh, to the June lows. It hit it exactly so far. Uh, we're below it in the uh, Dow Jones. We're heading towards the 786. We've broken down below uh, the 618 and the NASDAQ by a little bit, but that's primarily due to Apple because Apple is, you know, testing the lows that it made from, uh, you know, a long, long time ago. And I, I posted a chart of Apple into the... Um, Tiger TV, and it shows that uh, in the last six weeks we went from 706 to 523, and this was with the worst, uh, you know, <laughs> with the best news that Apple could ever have. I mean, it had the I iPhone 5, I guess, and all the free advertising that it was getting. And so, if this is what happens, you're going to uh, you, you ask yourself, you know, when when you start buying into news events like this, you're going to get really hammered. You know, we talked about this many, many times throughout this show. Uh, particularly, I remember when silver was topping in April uh, of last year, we were warning people, you know, about the parabolic move and the bullishness that was there. And, you know, that's really what, uh, you know, what we were what we were looking at. Now, I'm going to put, uh, evidently I forgot to put the Apple chart uh, into the uh, Tiger TV. I'm going to do it now. It's a, uh, it's a long-term monthly chart on Apple. And uh, if you get it, it, we've actually corrected more than we did in the 2007 to 2008 area. You know, we've come down, you know, a great deal. And so this is interesting, you know, where we are on a percentage basis. We haven't, of course, but on a dollar amount, uh, we certainly have. And with this wide bar, you know, I think we're going to get a, a bounce here in Apple uh, just on, you know, the fact that the market is so oversold. But, you know, this is what we need to be uh, looking at. Now, uh, the $64 question is, what's going to happen between now and the 28th of November? Uh, one of the best things that I ever learned from Tony Robbins was all of our expect all of our frustrations in our lives, whether it's children's, money, relationships, whatever it is, business, all of our frustrations come from unfulfilled expectations. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you an expectation. Uh, whether it's going to be fulfilled or not, nobody knows. If it works, we're going to make a lot of money. If it doesn't, we're going to lose a little bit of money. But that's all it is is an expectation. Okay, That's what we have to realize. I'm going to put up uh, several charts here now just to try to verify you know, where we are and where we've been. Uh, I found on the Internet last night, uh, an old chart, uh, someone was saying there was going to be a, a crash in 2010. Uh, actually, um, I, 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 I retract that. This was published in 2010. Uh, it was over what happened to the stock market between August the 24th and uh, October the 23rd, 1987, without doubt the most volatile time in the history of the stock market. So I've placed that into the... Uh, Tiger TV, and, and what you want to look at here is that on August the 25th, 1987, 
we had a five planet conjunction in other words all five planets Venus Mercury Mars Jupiter and I believe Saturn all were lined up together like bowling pins at zero degrees that was August the 25th the stock market topped uh, at around 2700 at uh, the 2820 I believe in the Dow the S&P was at uh, 350 uh, from that time we, we, we came down into September 7th we had a solar eclipse and a uh, new moon on the uh, 26th of September and what I did was I highlighted that with a red line showing the market rallied from the solar eclipse to the new moon it went rallied from new moon to full moon which was on October the 7th on October the 7th the market made a retracement a 61 percent retracement from the high of August 25th the market came down uh, several days after that and stopped on a it was a Wednesday and uh, it was a very interesting because the market uh, uh, stopped on that Wednesday and rallied up for two days and then on that Friday uh, the market made a, a, a match the high of Thursday and then closed below that low of Wednesday and the market was down 106 points. Now that date was October the 16th, 1987 and that was options expiration. So October options expired then. The next day, it doesn't show the gap because uh, the charting service that these folks used, you know, does not show gaps. But the the next day was the, was the big move down. That was the 19th, and that's where the big uh, crash happened. And it was really uh, it was really a disaster after that. So this is what we're this is what 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 happened during that time frame. In other words, we rallied from the new moon solar eclipse to the full moon lunar eclipse. Now the question is whether we're bottoming here or not and right now it doesn't look like it wants to bottom but if it does we've got the possibility and I say if it does and if it does what we have to do is we have to see what's going to happen um, you know to what happened to the same thing in August because in August of that year this is a little bigger picture of it it shows the same thing of the rally between the solar eclipse and the lunar eclipse you know that's what we're that's what we're watching now we will not know until this scenario unfolds on the 28th of November and if we keep going down and down and down we're down Friday if we're down tomorrow this is not going to work because that that uh, solar eclipse new moon cycle is never off by more than three days and this 13th 14th 15th this is the third day so we don't have any choice for that now I went into the CME website and I tried to find some options uh, way out of the money options and I couldn't find any and I don't do OEX so those of you that do, do OEX and they're much more heavily traded if you can find a an OEX that's maybe a hundred or two hundred or three hundred points out of the money that doesn't cost very much you know post it into the Tiger TV and the Tiger Dan to let folks know or send me an email and I'll post it but uh, I don't do the uh, the OEX's and uh, but I think that's where we ought to be looking is something you know can, way out of the money. We're only going to put up about oh five hundred to a thousand dollars. But if it's right, uh, it could make uh, a great deal of money. I'm not just talking five or ten times. I'm talking something really big. Now, there's a trick here. Because there's always a trick, right? <laughs> the thing that we have to watch is the fact that uh, if this is correct, and we come in on the uh, Wednesday, the 28th of November, which is the full moon lunar eclipse, and then the market starts down hard on the 29th and 30th of November, that's when we know we will be right. If the market is not heading down into the 29th and 30th of November, then this cycle scenario that I'm looking at, you know, our unfulfilled expectations, will happen and it won't work. But if it starts down on the 28th and goes down on the 29th and goes down on the 30th, any of those days would be a good day to buy, uh, buy a put option or, or just go flat out short. Now, uh, remember that you need to be going down and and the harder the down, the better, because that tells you that that cycle that we're looking at is, in fact, true. We've got a lot of things are telling us that this year, you know, could be the year. And and one of the things that, that we've talked about on this show for, for so long now, I mean, it's been, you know, weeks and weeks and weeks, is the fact that, you know, we've been looking at the Dow Jones Transportation Index and, and what it's been doing. And, and folks, uh, if you take a look at the Dow Jones Transportation Index, you know it doesn't look pretty. It's almost uh, <laughs> it's it's almost down to the June lows. In other words, we're only making a 61% retracement in the S&P, 
but in fact we are almost making a double bottom in the transportation. So the transportation index, you know, really, really looks looks very, very bad. Now I don't know, uh, and no one else does either. But you know, Richard Russell, who's the dean of the Russell uh, of the Dow Theory Index, he, he believes this is really ominous and is portending something very, very bad to happen to stocks. And when you look at this together, this is what you know we're this is what we're looking at now. Uh, earlier this week, I I posted a chart uh, for my uh, my for my subscribers uh, on uh, UPS because we were looking to buy uh, UPS at the uh, seventy one ninety four level, risking uh, just the one point. And as you can see, you know we had three higher bottoms in there until yesterday, and then the market broke below that, and that's where we got out. As we got out of that market at that point, now what that sets up is is a very much very much a very sharply lower prices in UPS. Now, UPS is one of the major shippers. We see their brown trucks everywhere because they're always double parked somewhere. And uh, this this tells us that UPS is heading for about $64. That's only down about another, uh, you know, 15%. But that's, uh, yeah, about, about 12 to 15%, but that's still quite a bit. The question is, if they're expecting such great Christmas sales, why is the stock going down? It can't be because oil prices are going higher because oil prices have been in the same range for weeks and months. So they must not be getting as many orders as they had last year. That's my assumption. That's what's telling us uh, about the Dow Jones Transportation Index. You know, so this is what we're looking at. I know this is the commodity hour, but this is very important stuff. And sometimes, you know, we don't always, you know, get to, uh, you know, pick the things that we want to talk about when they're really important. Now, um, we will get to commodities here right right now because I, I want to show, uh, you know, what we've got going now in, in Treasury bonds because we've had some really nice move in Treasury bonds over the last few days. Uh, we've had a uh, several AB equals CD patterns formed on the 13th and 14th. A big bottom occurred down at the uh, 5110 level. We're now uh, $1,000 uh, above that level, and we're heading for – higher prices we're ready to take out the highs from uh November the 13th and that sets up a situation that we talked about uh, both Monday and Wednesday and that is that we 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 could very easily if the stocks continue to fall from here you know very easily get to this uh level of uh the the 154 area which will be in a new high ground and uh, that's that's very very easy to do that because that's just a one point uh, two seven expansion of that last move. So we are in a real interesting time frame here, folks. Uh, uh, I, I it just looks real interesting. Again, I, I don't want you to get too excited because it has to uh, fulfill exactly all of the requirements. The first requirement is we must bottom today. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a better trader each week in his newsletter the gold report with over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week in addition to covering the xau hui gld and dollar the gold report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market for your 30-day free trial to tom o'brien's gold report log on to tfnn.com today don't miss out on this great offer act now
You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing. But what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk, charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Millionaires are made every day. The fact is, living your dreams is possible. Someone, somewhere is going to get rich. My recommendation is, let that be you. Each day, someone is making the decision to better themselves and creating a plan to fulfill their financial dreams. Let that be you. The key to turning dreams into reality is to take massive action. Let that be you. I'm Steve Rhodes, co-host of The Money Master Show with Tom O'Brien, seen daily at TFNN. And I can help you with your journey to great wealth. I'll show you how to create the ultimate financial edge, a set of tools, insights, and strategies that are part of my daily newsletter service, Mastering Probability. You'll have direct access to me by phone, email, and my private library of trading and investing secrets for 30 days with an unconditional money-back guarantee. I'll take your trading to the next level. Click on my name, Steve Rhodes, on the homepage of TFNN.com and turn your dreams into reality. Mastering Probability, folks. Let that be you. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. This segment is brought to you by Great Panther Silver. For more information, just click the Great Panther Silver banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Now, back to the Futures Hour. Okay, we're back, folks. If you have any questions, 877-927-6648. And we were talking you know, about the fact that the stock market is at another critical level. The, uh, the lunar cycle that we talk about, this full moon, new moon, it has a three-day orb. A three-day orb means that you have three days from the time that it hits to the time that it's supposed to be working. So 13th was the day, 14th was day two, the 15th is day three. This is the last day. If it's down tomorrow, and uh, you know, if, it, if it makes a low today and doesn't make a lower low tomorrow, it could still be good. But if we make a lower low on Friday than we did on Thursday, the lunar cycle is totally off course and you don't want to mess with it. And that happens. We've seen this happen before. I posted in the uh, you know Tiger TV uh, earlier today how well it's been working since June. Uh, there was a three-month period uh, earlier last year uh, towards the fall where you know the full moons and new moons were not catching anything at all. But most of the time, and I'm talking 70%, you're going to be really close to picking these things. The problem is, is you have to be able to use some pattern recognition to tell you what the price levels are. You know, and we're breaking down below, you know, these price levels, you know, quite a bit. I mean, it's all over the news that the S&P has gone below uh, the 200-day moving average, as has some of the others. But, you know, frankly, you know, I don't think that's nearly as important as when we're hitting these major support points like we are now in the S&P 
where it's trading, you know, right at the 61% retracement. That what was happening with the Dow yesterday at uh, 12,675, we were trading at that 61 percent level and then the last part of the day you know we 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 went we went below it by you know well over 150 points and now we could easily make the uh 786 at 12,400 and change but you know it could even go below that you know maybe this thing has already started that that I'm thinking is happening and we'll be able to and we won't be able to participate but we have to have patience here we have to see if the market you know, we've only been trading, you know, several hours now, three hours in the market. So we've got another three hours to go. So, you know, we've seen reversals uh, happen before around these times. So this is what we have to look for uh, to see if this is going to, you know, uh, you know, be the case and, uh, you know, give us this scenario that we want to. But then again, I keep going back to what Tony Robbins taught me and is that all of your frustrations in life, no matter what they are, come from expectations that you thought were going to be fulfilled, whether it's with your children, your spouse, uh, your church, you know, the elections, whatever it happens to be, all of your frustrations are you expecting something and the unexpected happens. So we're expecting something happen. Let's don't get too attached to it because if it does work, we'll be able to see it. And, of course, if it doesn't work, it won't make any difference at all. So it's just an opportunity. That's all it was. I was involved in that that move in the market at that time. I was heavily involved in, uh, you know, working with Dr. Ruth Miller uh, with the astrology part. And I was putting into my newsletter. I'd been on uh, FNN, which was the old CNBC, uh, before they were bought out and brought to New York. That was in California. It was uh, Financial News Network. And Bill Griffith and Sue Herrero had been interviewing me about this for some time and my comment was and I ended up you know I sold a lot of books because of this comment I told Bill Griffith on the air that I said sometime in October the Dow Jones would be down more than 350 points in one day and all I did was I knew that the Dow had dropped 190 points at one other day during that time period and all I did was multiply that out times uh, 1.618 and I came up with uh, I believe it was 310 points in one day and uh, it dropped, you know, more than 500. And it, it was you know, just a, a matter of, you know, repetition of what I think is, uh, you know, we're seeing in the market because the markets do rhyme. Now, it's been 25 years, you know, since we've seen anything like this. We had a flash crash back in May of uh, a couple of years ago. and uh, But this would not be a flash crash. This would take all day. It's not going to take 30 seconds. It'll take a day or two or three or four or, or six. Who knows? But it could be, you know, very, very... Uh, very, very bad. And, and and not only that, if you think about what's going on in, in, in Europe and what's going on in our political situation now, we've got a new regime in China. There's a lot of things that could trigger this. You know, the derivatives that are out there that, you know, might not be, uh, you know, someone would take the other side of these, like what we had with AIG during 2008, you know, that could very easily, uh, you know, be you know, be part of the problem. So uh, the thing that really surprising, I was listening to Basil's show, and he made a great comment about the news. And he said, you know, look what the news, if, if bull markets go up on bull moves, oh, got to take a break. I'll cover that when I get back. heard Tom O'Brien on the air and you've seen him on Tiger TV as well as being featured as a regular CNBC guest and contributor and now you can have access to his expert trading advice each morning through his daily trading newsletter Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter Market Insights gives traders, investors and money managers a thorough strategy for trading stocks, options and indices every market day. Market Insights comes out each market day before 9.30 a.m. and provides 
traders with Tom's daily commentary, opinion, and specific trade recommendations on the markets. Using advanced Fibonacci methods, volume indicators, Gartley patterns, candlestick charting, gaps, and market timing, Market Insights will give you specific trade recommendations including entry, stop, and exit prices. The summer is over and traders are back. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of tfnn.com. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to check out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page of TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern on TFNN. In just December of last year, the price of gold was down over 10%. In today's highly volatile gold market, you need someone in your corner that understands the complex relationships that exist within the price of gold, as well as within a variety of gold equities. Whether it's the South African gold miners and knowing how the RAND dollar relationship will affect their bottom line, or understanding how John Paulson's $5 billion trade in the GLD can move the market, Tom O'Brien gives you the direction you need to become a a better trader each week in his newsletter the gold report with over 20 individual equities covered and almost another 20 on the potential watch list each week in addition to covering the xau hui gld and dollar the gold report is a great source for any trader that is looking to be diversified in today's volatile gold market for your 30-day free trial to tom o'brien's gold report log on to tfnn.com today don't miss out on this great offer act now this segment is brought to you by Crocodile Gold. For more information, just click the Crocodile Gold banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Now, back to the Futures Hour. Okay, we're back, folks. And um, I was just referring to what Basil said on his show, and that is in bull markets, the, the markets go up whether it's bullish news or bearish news. And in bearish markets, the market goes down on whether it's bullish news or bearish news. And uh, I think it's a really good thing to remember, and, uh, you know, that's why you want to uh, take a look at it. Um, we, um, we're we looking at some, um, uh, some put options uh, right now, and they're really, really... Um, high priced and for, first of all we wouldn't be doing those now anyway uh, we would be waiting until we uh, come into the 28th if this happens uh, I really was in a quagmire of whether I was going to even talk about this because you know when you put something like this out there you know if it doesn't work you know you know you feel like you're uh, you feel like an idiot well I, I've I've been in that position many times before but my job here is to try to, you know, to use my experience of, of what I've seen over the years and to try to, uh, you know, find, 
you know, places where we're able to, uh, you know, make make a few bucks. You know, we were, you know, we were really telling you folks about this in the uh, uh, Apple when it was around 700. I mean, we had uh, our friend William on from Singapore who was, we were talking about the Apple puts at that time. And, uh, you know, these things have gone, uh, you know, to astronomical levels. And, and, and I don't know. A lot of them don't happen, but the ones that do are the ones that, you know, pay the rent and stuff like that. So, you know, that's what you're looking at. Oh, by the way, uh, you talk about unfulfilled expectations. I went to see the James Bond uh, new movie Skyfall yesterday, and I couldn't even get it a ra- give it a rating of three. There were only three things in that movie that interested me. One was the, uh, the scene in Shanghai showing, uh, you know, the big buildings, and Sarah and I had just been – in those uh, most of well three or four of those buildings we stayed right on the river there and then the new uh, giant casino in Macau was also featured in the movie but the real highlight of the movie is when he goes to the garage and he pulls out the 1962 DB5 Aston Martin with the ejector seat and the 30 caliber machine guns uh that car by the way sold at auction last year for five million dollars it was originally had a price of twelve thousand dollars on it before it was retrofitted but uh it uh, sold for five million dollars to a collector and the collector uh, donated the car to a uh, a charity so it was really that was the highlight of the movie the rest of it i particularly uh, didn't think it was very good at all so that's uh that's the the neither here nor there okay now we've got uh uh, something happening in the gold market right now. Uh, we talked about bonds earlier. Uh, we've talked about stocks. We want to talk about some commodities now. But uh, the gold market is uh, is under some pressure right now. Uh, as long as we stay above 1672 in the gold, that's the big ABCD that we had for them, uh, you know, back on November the 5th, you know, that I, that I think will be okay. Uh, we had a, a small Gartley form. Uh, yesterday on the 30-minute charts uh, that came in on November 14th at 1735, and since that time, you know, we've we've broken uh, over $30 uh, an ounce in gold. Uh, silver has also been breaking, but the interesting one is the stock market has been getting hammered very badly here uh, over the last uh, what uh, six or seven days. I mean, you know, it's just been bombarded. It's been going down, you know, since that time. And uh, what's what's interesting is is we're going to take a look at copper now, because uh, you know the copper, you know we talked about this holding the 61 percent retracement at that three dollars and forty six cents a pound level, and it is still holding even with the stock market going down. So this is what we have an unfulfilled expectation. It gives me false hope, because if this was really bearish, I would think copper would be down below, you know, three thirty uh, or three thirty six a pound, but it's still holding the three forty. Uh, six per pound level, which is a good sign. It could give it up all today, but right now it's still holding it up, you know, with the market, you know, backing off, you know, like it, uh, like it's been doing. So there's a positive thing, and I also put into the Tiger uh, TV the VIX index that Basil had talked about. I, I seem to be repeating everything that Basil says, but believe me, folks, he's good. If you if you guys want to really learn something, go to his webinar. I mean, you you don't get the, you don't get a professional person to give that much information out over a webinar, and that's it. So we'll see. Oh, a, a question arises uh, from one of our listeners about am I am I bullish on gold? I was bullish on gold up until the seven eight six at seventeen ninety seven, and you know that was very apparent that we were we were topping there. We hit the sixty one percent retracement in silver right to the penny, and we hit the gold right within a dollar. And you know we 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 said gold needs to get above eighteen hundred dollars an ounce in order to be, you know, really bullish. I was really bullish during May and June in gold because of all the bottoms that we had. We posted that chart in there. Uh, probably half a dozen times over the f- fast few weeks of where we had the five higher bottoms and they kept going higher. I want to see what gold is going to do if it can hold the 1672 level because 1672, you know, was a three to retracement of that whole move from May all the way up into September, and now we want to see if it's going to hold that. Thus far, it has, but we want to make sure that 1672 will hold. Um, the um, uh, the next thing that I wanted to talk about is, uh, you know, how you handle these trades that don't always work the way you want them to. And in particular, what we want to do is we want to take a look at the corn market. 
because uh, you know we were looking at corn uh, last on the last Thursday show, and we were talking about the similarities that we were having in the corn market, you know, compared to you know previous uh, cycles. And I just wanted to keep us updated uh, as to where we are here. Um, this is the chart that we talked about uh, last Thursday before the big grain report. And uh, the report came out. It was slightly bearish. And the market rallied up uh, about 20 or 30 cents from that level. And then has since, uh, you know, backed off. But we still have not gone uh, below those lows that we made in September. So the cycle is still is still okay, but the problem is it didn't react the way that we wanted it to. This uh, this trade actually turned out to be a non-event because we had uh, a situation where we uh, didn't have to risk very much after the report. Uh, you had to risk a lot into the report, but after the report you didn't have to risk nearly that much, and that that's the real the real beauty of it. But so far, the uh, the corn has held the 382 retracement. Uh, of what we did from May during the whole drought. Uh, we made the three drive to a top pattern in corn at the exact 1.618 expansion at 850. And that was the day we had uh, Rich Anderson on from Anderson Capital Management. And he was telling us, you know, that the uh, people that were in the business of shipping corn were not shipping as much as uh, they had anticipated. And then we had this big crop report that happened last Friday. Uh, corn has backed off a little bit, uh, about 15 or 20 cents. We still have not taken out the lows of uh, of September, which is which is really good. But uh, you know, it, it needs to hold this level of seven dollars uh, per bushel. Otherwise, it's going to be you know uh, under a great deal of trouble. And that's the the key to these things is you've got to be able to look at. Now, there's one other market you know that's very big in in our agricultural scenario for the United States, and that is the uh, soybean market and uh, you'll notice that the uh, 618 support that we talked about before the report it didn't hold up very well we have now broken down you know below the 786 level from where the double top formed back in August and September that was right in the middle of the drought when the drought was uh, you know finishing and that happened to be a big a b equals c d pattern completing up there at the same time uh, it was almost exactly 1.618. It missed it by about four cents, and when you consider the contract was for sixteen dollars and eighty cents a bushel, and missing it by four cents, that's pretty much a, a spot-on hit. So uh, we have to uh, realize that we're in some bear markets in some of these things, and we have to uh, be extremely uh, observant of, of what's happening when we're when we're looking at these things because it makes a uh, uh, a lot to be said whether we're going to have inflation or deflation, and that's the whole secret of what we're trying to do here. Now, I need to talk to you about uh, crude oil because we've had some uh, an interesting situation. We've had a big move down in crude oil today, and uh, we have. Uh, I'll show it to you on two ways. I'm going to show it to you on the daily, and then I also want to show it to you on the uh, on the on the half hour because it shows the the beautiful pattern that you had. Uh, at that time, but we uh, we're, we're trading below the 61 percent retracement again, which is not good for you know long-term inflation. If that's what you're looking, if that's what you're looking at, so this is something that you want to to really watch. But the real key to the to crude oil today is if you were watching it, uh, you know, on the um, uh, hold on one second. I've got to clean something up here, and we will get it so I can so everybody can see it real easily. And I'll draw this in, and then we'll be there in just a second. You'll see uh, when I put into Tiger TV that um, we made a higher high than we did back on the 9th of November by just three cents in crude oil, and that completed a big ABCD up there. And since that time, the market has dropped two dollars uh, a barrel. That's two thousand dollars in commodity terms. The margin on that's about eight thousand. But it you know dropped twenty five percent of your whole margin if you were short during that time, and what we're doing now is we're coming down and we're testing you know the seven eight six off of that of that number we're within just uh you know twenty cents or so of that number so if if crude oil does not hold this uh this eighty four sixty eighty four seventy level it is going to be under a great deal of pressure, and we could have a move where you get four dollars or more down. In crude oil, because there will be some stops there. Those were the stops that ha held all over November, 
And, you know, many people, uh, you know, they put their stops under those previous lows. And if the market does start to cascade from that point, that's what happens, you know, when you're, uh, you know, uh, you know, that, that's when you, where you're expecting the thing to, to, to really drop. And so far, this is what we're looking at. The crude oil has not been performing well compared to gold or any of the other commodities. So this is why we, uh, you know, you have sort of a bearish uh, bearish bias to it. And that's what uh, that's what we're trying to do. If you have any questions, it's 877-927-6648. That's what we really want to be uh uh, focusing on is uh, the, so I'm sorry I'm trying to read something out of the uh, Tiger uh, Den and, and to get a question, but the, keep, keep keep asking me, you know, what should we do as far as do, what put do we want to buy, uh, you know, on November the eighth. Let's wait till November twenty. It's November twenty eighth. Let's wait till November twenty eighth, and I will try to get a strategy. Right now, the prices of those puts, and I'm talking puts that are way out of the money are still way too much. I mean, back in, in 1987, you know, you literally could buy these puts for pennies, but now they're they're asking a great deal, and that's the uh, that's the thing that you have to, uh, you know, you just remember of what you're doing. Now, I wanted to uh, show you a divergence that we have going right now because I think it's important uh, because of the fact that I have this outstanding bet with our fearless leader, uh, Tom O'Brien, and that is, uh, is if bonds can make it to you know the 160 level now the um, the price of the bonds I'll uh, take uh, okay the, I posted in the Tiger TV the price of the Treasury notes and, and then what I did is I overlaid it with the price of the bonds and what I'm going to do is take a call here from Danny in Atlanta and uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions Danny are you there I'm here hi Larry how are you I'm good um, yes. this morning we made a 50 percent retracement in the gold um, I know that's not normally a level that you look to buy. That's correct, unless I have a really nice ABCD there, and, and this particular one we did not. We just hit seventeen thirty-five, and we just backed off $35. That's all it was. It's just a small move. It doesn't really mean much. So um, if, if you're not in the gold market, uh, is this a place where you would buy, or would you look wait for like a 618 retracement or – Closer to the uh... yeah, I, I I like to trade sixty one percent retracements. Uh, you know, we're over over some pretty heavy cyclical stuff uh, today. At least I think it's yesterday, today, or somewhere in here. And this should be a you know a change of some time. But you know, gold still looks bullish. You know, on a uh, on a, on the longer term chart. I mean, it's you know bottomed with you know five higher bottoms, and we backed off you know quietly each time. And, uh, you know, if you're, if you're going to buy gold, buy it when it's correcting. Don't buy it when it's breaking out. But, Danny, if we get above $1,800 an ounce on a closing basis, to me, uh, that's going to be the secretariat of moves because uh, once we get above 1800 that's the 786. That's the monthly highs going back above last year. And that means a lot of demand is going to be coming in, in my opinion. But we need to get gold above $1,800 an ounce for it to get to be moving. Uh, that same level in silver is $37 an ounce. So we're quite a ways away from there. But if we get above that, that's it. Now, are you still there, Danny? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, uh, uh, Mr. Z, uh, Zetao, in, a, in the room yesterday talked about the, the fact that there's so many $1,800 calls that are outstanding, you know, that, that expire in just, uh, I think, a week from Friday. Uh, there's only six, uh, six, yeah, six days to go. And the chances of those calls being, you know, worth anything is almost zero. So it might be, you know, earlier in the year, or early next month before we get anything moving. Stay with me, Danny. We'll talk some more about it. Okay. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. 
Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intra-week trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the Technical Corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Now, back to the Futures Hour. Okay, we're back. Danny, are you still there? I'm still here. Did you have another question? Yeah. Um, if you look at the royalty companies, uh, Royal Gold and Silver Wheaton, they're not miners, but they make... Uh, uh, royalties off um, the sales for miners, you know, they're extremely weak. Um, they're down, you know, 5 and 3% today, respectively. Um, that I'm watching that very much, and as a matter of fact, you know, the, one of the largest uh, manufacturers of uh, miners of gold, of course, is Newmont, and we've been watching that, uh, you know, several times, and, and and it's doing, you know, it's just gapping below these uh, these fib numbers that we look at. It started, uh, you know, more than uh, two weeks ago. 
we alerted everybody when it gapped below the 382 level at uh, $52 a share, and now it's at $44 a share. So, you know, if gold needs a reason to go down, this could be it, <laughs> because these are really looking bad. Yeah. Um, so, you know, if you go long here, like you say, you got to put your stop under the oh. 1672. Yeah, when I do, when I have, you know, patterns like this and stuff, uh, Danny, is I, I move down to a half-hour, 15-minute chart to try to find a pattern where I don't have to risk, you know, uh, you know, an arm and a leg. That's what we did with the UPS and some of these other things. But when you have these gaps and wide-ranging, bar, these long-ranging bars to the downside, that's, that's the old uh, market axiom of don't try to catch a falling knife because that's what you're – that's what you're facing. You know, if you take a look at this Newmont chart, it just keeps gapping down, you know, and, and, and huge amount of selling. You know, we're we're either making a triple bottom here from May, August, and November, or this stock is, is heading for about $20 a share. That's what it looks like to me. Okay. Yeah, thanks a lot, Danny. That's good information, you know, because I don't follow, you know, all the stocks that are out there in, in gold and in silver and stuff. But Newmont, which is one of the largest ones, and we follow it quite a bit because of the gold-silver index, you know, that's telling us that, uh, you know, we're doing the same thing here. And since we're on the gold-silver index, we talked about that the other day with the wide-ranging bars. And here again, we're continuing with the same thing. We're, we're seeing the same scenario where we have these real, you know, strong wide-ranging bars coming down. The market was a perfect 61% retracement sell up there at 195, and now it's at 162, and it's coming down you know, rapidly, it's the old falling knife scenario, and that's what's uh, that's what's happening. So you certainly don't want to try to pick a bottom here. This is why I'm, you know, I'm not a buyer of gold in this area, is because of the, um, you know, the things that we're seeing in the gold index plus the, you know, the major, you know, gold stocks themselves. It's telling us that things are not uh, uh, rosy on the way to Camelot. So uh, I would be very, uh, very careful, you know, buying some of these things, you know, in this level right here. I so guess, we've. I guess, I guess the big question is if we do get a, a crash type scenario, scenario in the stock market, is it going to be a liquidation event where people have to sell their gold and silver oh. contracts? And no, 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 Danny. The guys that are in the stock market are not the same guys that are in the gold and silver. The gold and silver guys, we never sell our silver or gold. <laughs> we sell our firstborn and our secondborn, but not the silver and the gold. <laughs> All right. I still, I still have gold that I had. I mean, I'm, I can't even and silver, going back to when I was in college. I mean, uh, you know, it, it's just really, you know, something that I enjoy. Uh, collecting and everything, so you know, who knows? But anyway, Newmont is at a, a real, a real critical level in another one dollar. It's going to be interesting whether it holds this triple bottom. It's a possibility, but with all the gaps we've had, it's making us believe that it's probably not going to hold. Okay, folks, thanks a lot for calling in, Danny, and everybody. Live a day, live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless.